Well, hello out there, YouTube. So today, I want to talk about something that probably is not really well known about autism, although it's been kind of mentioned before. And that's my floor creaking, not farting, okay? I'm not farting, my floor creaks. But anyway, I want to talk about burnouts because I very recently had a very serious burnout. Let's see, the night of December 17th all the way until the 24th. So that's a week of a burnout. And although I kind of got functional kind of by Tuesday, I was still not quite me and quite out of it until December 24th. So what is a burnout? Well, for an autistic person, kind of an autistic burnout, it's kind of like a breakdown. Except, I'm going to use my case because everybody's different, but in my case, it was just every single day of December had done something to break my routine. Just over and over, and it just piled up and piled up and piled up, and I just collapsed. Like, literally collapsed. I just collapsed in on myself. Um, let's see, December 17th, that's the anniversary of when I lost Bernie, so that's a really bad day, and it seems like the emotion of it hits when the sun goes down, because it was dark out when we had him euthanized. Bernie was a dog, if you don't know, Bernie was my dog. In 2012, we had him, had him euthanized, he was sick, and we just couldn't get him better. We tried everything we had, and just, I don't talk about it much because it still even now it's very upsetting to talk about so I try not to but I just I started to have like one of my major crying meltdowns right after I ate dinner I think yeah it was right after dinner because I laid back on my bed and I had my hands over my mouth like this because I was crying so hard and I didn't want anybody to hear me you know I kind of did but I didn't because I didn't want to bother anybody so I was just crying and I kind of got myself together and I just kind of told myself, okay, it's just tomorrow's Sunday, the day's going to be over, you're going to be okay. You know, and remember, every day up to that had had my routine broken in some way, some major, some minor. And people do not understand that even differences in routine do not, that do not personally affect me still affects me you know like people coming and going and they're not supposed to my brain is going the door is opening it shouldn't be opening right then oh my gosh I hear the door blah 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 so just on and on every day and my dad had to have his DBS electrodes replaced the batteries because he has Parkinson's he had the deep brain stimulation the electrodes are in here and here in his head and then the wires go down and then the battery packs are here and the electricity kind of blocks the signal or it stimulates like his basal ganglia or some part of his brain that kind of prevents the tremors a little bit in all but his legs. You know, his hands are pretty steady, but his legs still shake a lot. But So we had that surgery on the 15th, and I was walking around the house crying and freaking out. You know, I knew all this stuff was coming, so it was fine, but it's just everything in between that, just so many breaks in routine every day, I could not handle it. And on the 17th, I started to collapse from it, but I kind of rallied on the 18th because that was Sunday, but if you watch that video of December 18th, 2016, I kind of look like I'm really tired. I kind of look like I'm not all there, and that Sunday, the sound system in the church had something had gone wrong with it or something, so we had to do the sound system set up a bit differently. And so that was a change, and, you know, I just, I barely got through Mass, and I got home, and I edited the video, and I put it up, and I was just sitting on my computer, just, my body just kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier, and it wasn't a fever, I wasn't sick, it was just, I thought maybe it was because I didn't sleep well, and, but, as the day went on, it just, it felt like I was getting slower and slower and slower at functioning, and just doing, like, everyday things. And then I had my dinner, and I did the routine of with my dad's medicine and my medicine, getting it all laid out. 
and then I put my pajamas on, I turned off all the lights in my room, and I got in bed. This was at like 7.30 p.m., okay? And I'm a person that goes to bed usually anywhere between 11 and 2.30 in the morning. You know, I'm a night owl. So I went to bed at like 7 something that night, that Sunday. And I pretty much stayed in bed until Tuesday. So let's see, 18th, 19th, the 20th. So that was three days where I was only in bed completely. Like, I only got up to go to the bathroom or to take my medicine or just to type a little bit at my computer. And I was in bed, blind shut, windows closed, door shut, with a note that said, go away on the front of my door so people outside could see the note on my door to leave me alone. And I would just lay in bed, sometimes with the blanket over my head, sometimes just laying there. But off and on I would cry or I would punch myself. And I didn't eat unless food was brought to me. So I ate between 7 p.m. on Sunday. I did not eat again until 5 p.m. on Monday. And on Tuesday, I think I did much the same. I just did not have the will to get up and get food. All I had the will to do was to get up to ju just the necessities, like in the morning to feed the cats and get my dad his, his breakfast and his medicine in the morning. And then I'd go back in my room, lay down, shut down, just lay there. I didn't watch TV, nothing. I just laid there, eyes closed. And time just washed over me. It was just passing, and I was not part of it. I was not part of the world for that time. There was almost no thought process happening either. It's really weird to explain it, but that's what it was. All I could think of in my mind was blank and dark. And it makes me emotional because I'm coming to, to what helped. You know, there was a couple of things that helped, but... The first one was my mom, because on Tuesday I went out and my dad just sat me down and just said all the wrong things. But that's my dad for you, you know, he's not very good with being emotional, you know, emotional abusive issue situation, so, but he sat me down and basically acted like my behavior was an affront directly to him and just he was taking all this offense to it and he basically threatened to drag me to a mental health professional if I didn't shape up right then. You know I tried to explain what it was but I didn't have the will or the words so I didn't make any sense and he didn't even try to understand which made it so much worse. So I went back in my room and I just cried and I laid in bed and I just I just pondered, you know, would anybody notice if I died in here? Which is really bad, because I was not suicidal in any form. I was just, do I still exist? Or do I not exist? What, what am I? Where am I? Who am I? And a little while later, my mom came in to check on me because she was really worried. I guess she'd spoken to my dad and he had ex talked to her and my mom is better at understanding me, so... God, I'm saying so many words at once, I like have to take a break and think for a sec. But my mom came into my room and she knew how to talk to me in a way that would get me to kind of open up because one of my issues is sometimes I can't walk up to somebody and say, I'm sad. I just act very... And if somebody says, are you okay, what's wrong? Then I can spill my guts about what's going on. But it has to be very non-confrontational. And my dad is just one of the most confrontational people on the planet. You know, he acts like, you can come to me about any problem you have, blah, blah, blah. But then when I do, he somehow twists it always into me being wrong for feeling that way. So he is not safe to talk to. He may think he is, but he's not. My mom... On the other hand, she understands. She knows how to get me to talk. So, she, like I said, she came into my room 
and I happened to be standing next to my bed because, you know, I didn't want to lay there and get some kind of blood clot in my leg or something. So I was standing and like stretching my, my calf muscles a little bit. And she happened to come in at the time when I was standing next to my bed. And she said that, you know, I'm really worried about you. And, you know, she wanted to know what was wrong. And she came over and she hugged me and she hugged me tight. I mean, not like a weak little hug, but she hugged me and I just started crying and I just, I completely came apart like I am right now, except I don't think I'm gonna start to cry, but I could just because of how emotional it was and how much that meant to me is she asked me what's going on and I was able to explain it to her. You know, that everything, I was just I was just saying things. I didn't even know if I made any sense to her, but it seemed like I did because she was very understanding. And I just, I told her, you know, I'm scared. I feel like my whole routine is broken. I feel like nothing makes any sense to me. And I can't control myself anymore. And I just started crying. And then I had a panic attack in her arms. Because I remember distinctly saying, I'm having a panic attack. I'm scared. And you know she got me to breathe you know she got me to breathe before it got to the blackout point because I have had aside from that one I've only had a panic attack two other times in my life and I'm sorry if I'm babbling but when I had those panic attacks I had a wink of memory where there's a period of time that I just can't account for and it wasn't able to get that far this time because you know, she got me to breathe, and she just got me to calm down, and she was, you know, she was rubbing her hands down my hair like this, because I don't like my hair getting rubbed up and down, and she knows that, so she was rubbing her hands like this down my back, which was a very regular and very not scary sensation, because it was regular, it was predictable, and she was just talking into my ear, not loud, just talking, not whispering, but talking, and... You know, she was telling me, you know, all the cookies are done, you know, all the cookies are given away, you know, and the car is okay because our car had broken down on, like, Sunday. Our car had been a mess, and that was another thing I was freaking out about, you know, and this, she was like, you're going to get to choir practice, you know, everything is okay, your dad is okay, you know, everybody's okay, it's all okay. And I said, I know it's not that, it's the routines being broken over and over and over. I can't stand it anymore, Mom. I feel like I'm going to die. And, you know, she just kept reassuring me. She didn't tell me, no, you're not going to die, blah, blah, it's okay. You know, she didn't say that. She just validated how I felt. And I get really emotional about that because I'm not used to that. I'm so used to being told, just suck it up, you're wrong to feel like that. I'm so used to that, that when people validate my feelings, it kind of, it hurts, but in a good way. Like stretching out a cramped muscle, because it's like, I'm safe to express myself. And that's hard for me to do, because I've always been afraid to. Because I've always been taught, like I said, you're wrong to feel that way. You shouldn't feel that way. You need to suck it up and not complain. Because nobody cares. And when you're made to feel like that all your life, when you have people in your life just say, it's okay to talk to me, and they actually mean it. I'm actually crying because I'm happy. Not because I'm sad. But my mom, she was able to get me to calm down. You know, she was able to get me to calm down. And I feel like I just needed to cry. And I kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she's like, you don't have to be sorry. You are feeling feelings and it's okay to feel those feelings. And it, it feel like that I was just able to just have this huge meltdown right in my mom's arms. And she understood. She didn't make fun of me. She didn't tell me I was wrong. She just let me feel. And that's what I needed at the time. I just needed to feel. And I feel like that's what let me start to climb out of the burnout that I was in.
because I was able to like get this stuck feeling out and I was starting to have emotions come back because I was very dull and it was just either very sad or very angry or nothing at all and there was a whole lot of nothing I was so numb that when my mom let me feel those things again it was like walking out into the sun when you've lived underground your whole life it just blinded me and to, to remember a feeling is to feel it for me so that's why I'm crying because of that moment again because when I cried then it wasn't sad either I was relieved <laughs> and like I said when I remember something I feel it so this is not sad crying this is not sad this is happy crying <laughs> so, <laughs> such a it's so contradictory crying when you're happy and yes sometimes I eat my tears I don't eat my snot but I eat my tears it's very salty but anyway you know she got me to calm down and she encouraged me to not lay in bed all day and she left my door open she told me please leave your door open so that I can see that you're okay you know which which I did and you know that wasn't what she said but it was what she implied but she was like please leave your door open but I kind of heard the unsaid thing of so that I can see you're okay because that's how my mom is you know she'll think of everybody else before herself and uh, god that was a cry and a half but um I hope that's not okay I thought I was snotting down my face so okay now I now I'm out of the memory again I'm back in the present um so I was able to get out of bed and you know I was able to sit up and I tolerated sitting up which I wasn't able to do before I think I just had to get that weight off of me and so you know from then on I kinda got out of bed and I started to eat again you know normal food cuz you know she noticed how my stomach was growling and she's like are you eating and I said only dinner and she's like don't do that so I went out and I I think it was that day I went out and I got a yogurt but it could have been but it could have been Wednesday before I started to get back into eating the way I usually do cuz you know for me to only have one meal a day that's just not me because I'm like a snacker it's like arr, arr, arr. I got snack food for munchies and I didn't even want that I had zero will to get up and eat food at all unless it was brought to me and mom brings me dinner because she cooks it so but you know I had just written on Facebook about how I felt like nobody gave a crap about how I felt and then I went in and posted again that and then my mom just walked in and proved me wrong and that meant so much to me that meant that meant the universe to me for her to, to come in and do that for me and to understand me and just let me get it out once she opened the door for me to let my feelings out I let them out and I was able to come unstuck and then you know I kind of just crawled out of like the being in bed and being so tired and weighed down feeling and you know the weekend happened and, and I was you know let's see no not not Christmas yet let's see it was the 17th so let's see Tuesday I was still really bad Wednesday I was gonna take a shower and the phone rang I think it was Wednesday but I was gonna take a shower and the phone rang and it was Donnie by the way it's Donnie's birthday today happy birthday Donnie I love you Donnie called me on the phone you know we talk to each other don't ask my number because I'm not going to give it to just any person you know I've known Donnie for a long time online and he called me and I almost broke down again when he called me God, I might do it again right now just think about how I felt that day when he called me because you know I was still I was feeling better but I was still a mess you know inside emotionally I was still a mess and he called me and just hearing his voice was like <laughs> it was like having God answer all my prayers and just be like I need somebody outside the situation to talk to 
and I didn't expect him to call but I was glad that he did because when he called me it's just like my heart just went nuts because I love him so much you know you know he's such a good friend and a good listener and I have called him I'm crying before and he just let me talk without judging me you know Donnie and my mom have a lot in common and when he called me up you know we just talked and he made me laugh which I had not done for almost like five days it seems like almost feel like five years but he got me to laugh which I really needed and we just talked about stuff you know just like we do and I'm not somebody that talks a lot you know unless it's like a YouTube video or something but me and Donnie we can talk for like an hour and a half on the phone sometimes and and he called me up and I was able to just unpack myself so to speak and I feel like that's what finally got me over the edge of this burnout I felt like I was stuck in the event horizon of a black hole where you know if you cross it that you can't come back out so I felt like I was sitting there and it was kind of a war between am I gonna fall back in or am I gonna get out you know and it's like Hawking radiation you know there's two particles that create themselves and they collide and annihilate each other in the span of seconds and sometimes that happens right by a black hole and maybe one particle goes in and one goes away and finds another one to blow up with or something but I just felt like the Hawking radiation stuck on the edge of a black hole oh, God I love Stephen Hawking I love that guy only thing I don't agree with is his atheism but other than that you know dude I could listen to him all day but you know I feel like Donnie got me away from the edge of that black hole I feel like he got me away from the event horizon just a few inches but those inches were enough that I was able to get away from it and come out of it and so like two really important people in my life came through when I really needed them and all autistic people need people like that in their life and I just wish I could give everybody Donnie and my mom because they're amazing people and I am so grateful that I have them in my life because I don't know who or where I would be if I didn't I would not be this open or this able to talk about my feelings even on video if I didn't have my mom and Donnie in my life to offset the crap that my dad and my sister often put me through but that was my burnout and it was horrible it was a horrible burnout it sucked and I was still in it on Thursday when my choir did choir practice. I was still in it. And, you know, that practice, I was really grumpy, you know. Even though I kind of tried to act like I was happy, I was really grumpy for that choir practice. And we did, we did the same song that we did in 2012 when we lost Bernie and that unexpectedly turned on some waterworks too which was embarrassing because I had to hold it in because we had to keep moving from thing to thing we had to like just cram a whole bunch into just a short time so in choir I was kind of a bit reserved and just kind of inside of my own head because I was still climbing away from that black hole of a burnout but by Friday I was starting to feel like genuine happiness again I was starting to get a little bit cheerful and then Saturday because okay first of all the Christmas cookies you know I took a platter of my choir and my mom likes to give them out to the neighbors so on Saturday one of our the big burly huge scary micro motorcycle microcycle motorcycle guys that live across the street one of them came over with this huge humongous package of chocolates from like all around the world as a Christmas present and he was just like Merry Christmas and I was like oh my gosh Merry Christmas do you realize you're feeding a chocolate habit and the guy laughed and he walked away but the way he smiled the way his face just lit up he was wearing sunglasses so I didn't feel pressured with eye contact so I was able to see his face light up when he smiled and it's just that was when the Christmas spirit hit me and because I was so afraid that I was going to be down and out on Christmas and just kind of going through the motions but that moment I felt it and you know it's funny how God can smile at you through a stranger and make everything okay but he did it that day Christmas Eve Christmas miracle 
is getting me that that was like that's what got me away from the black hole out of the burnout and I was back and it was just like yes I am here and now that big giant package of chocolate is sitting in my living room because my living room is that way and that way it's kind of diagonal to where I'm sitting in relation to me you know the Christmas tree is kind of off of where my left shoulder is so that night I did Silent Night like I do you know I did the whole little solo at the very beginning every other year I was terrified that night I wasn't I was back and I just I was back and I owned that thing but that was that whole week was probably one of the hardest things I'd gone through since I lost Bernie and with Bernie I kind of I think I had a burnout too, but I didn't give in to the lay in bed and do nothing thing like I did this year. But this year it was just, there was no way to not do that. It was either do that or just be screaming and having meltdowns and punching myself over and over for hours at a time. Because that's how bad it was. That's how bad I felt. And it's just like these emotions were stuck and I had no way to express them until I was allowed to. And once I was allowed to and all those things came out, it's like the weight that was pinning me down just came off. So the moral of all of my babbling, if you're still here listening to me, is that a burnout is not the end of the world. Burnouts are hard. They're scary. They can look just like depression. They can look just like clinical depression, and I think that's why Donnie was able to understand because he deals with depression, because he has the condition. As, as far as I know, he has the condition, and so he could understand that whole feeling like you're just so heavy you can't move. He understood that feeling. And being surrounded by understanding people is so important, even if you're only surrounded by two people. That's four, two people. You know, if you got even one person that gets it, hang on to them. It's so worth it. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I feel like I just made like a really long modern Shakespearean monologue or something and I just said a whole bunch of big words in a row. But that was my burnout. And it ended with a really awesome Christmas. And it just goes to show that sometimes the really sorrowful, sad things, you know, there is joy on the other end of it. You just, even if it seems like the sad part will never end, it does. It does, and it will. And you will see happiness again someday. All of you out there who are struggling, you know, I found it. I needed help, but I found it. And I hope you will, too. So, happy almost New Year. Happy birthday, Donnie. I love you so much. Mwah. Oh my god, I love you. Mwah. I love you all so much. So, Merry Christmas. Happy almost New Year. And I love you guys. Bye.